uh, did y'all read the same thing I read? That God said, take the boy to the mountain, sacrifice him on the mountain. He's not supposed to come back. Why would Abraham say, we will go, we will worship, and we will come back? It's because Abraham has that kind of faith. See, when you pray, you got to believe that God is able to do the impossible. Do I have some witnesses here that know that God is able to do the impossible? What Abraham does is he speaks those things that are not as though they already are. And what we need to do if we're really going to look up and have faith in God is that we've got to be able to speak it before we see it. Okay, okay. Y'all really going to make me work hard. Um, um, okay, my, my, my father-in-law is, is now in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia with us, my, my wife's father, and it's a joy to have him around, mainly because he shares a lot of funny stories and old stories of when my, my, my wife was growing up. And, and uh, uh, he told me a story one day where he, he said one time he was working out in the yard, and my wife Stephanie, a little girl at that time, came up and said, Daddy, um, I know you can lift this house with two hands. But can you do it with one hand? I said, man, that, that sounds like faith. I, and I asked him, I said, what did that do for you? He said, let me tell you what that did for me. He said, when she said that, I, I began to work harder. I began to use my, I felt stronger than I was because my daughter's faith in my strength made me want to provide and protect even more. Don't you know God is attracted to your faith? When you begin to walk into impossible situations and say, my God is able to walk in and say, you know what, God, I know you can provide for this whole family on one income, but can you do it without any income? God, I know you're able to, to, to cause us to do evangelism and we might not have all the money, but God, can you do it without any money? Because you own a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We've got to start having faith that God can do the impossible. He said, I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know we're going up the mountain and we are coming back because God is attracted to faith. The Bible says without faith. It didn't say without the Sabbath. It said without faith. He, he, it is impossible to please him because he is attracted to those who believe in his power. So, so I got to rush. Uh, they start climbing up the mountain. Uh, Isaac says, Father, I, I see the wood and I see the rope. We've got everything for the sacrifice, but uh, where is the sacrifice? Abraham says, the Lord himself will provide. They get up. Isaac lays down on the altar. The Bible does not tell us when Abraham told him what was going to happen. But all we know is in submission and agreement with his father, he lays down, allows himself to be bound, and now Abraham lifts his hand to plunge that dagger in obedience into the naked chest of his only loved son. And is at this moment that God cries out, Abraham, Abraham. God calls him twice because he's so focused on doing what God asked him to do. But God calls him again because now he's passed the test. Now God knows that he loves him more than he loves his son. And here's where I've been trying to get today. Abraham is about to obey God. God speaks again. Abraham, Abraham, don't harm the boy. If Abraham had stopped listening to God, he would have killed Isaac in the name of obedience. He would have killed the promise 
because he was obeying what God said rather than what God was saying. Mm. And some of us are stuck on the last word God gave. But we have not tuned our ears to keep listening. Think about how serious this is. What dream are you killing because you stop listening to God? Some of y'all are about to kill something God intended to live because you stopped praying too early. Some of y'all are about to destroy something God wants to build because you don't persevere in prayer. Some of us are about to abort the promise because we pray and then stop because we don't see it come to fruition. Abraham would have been disobedient in his obedience if he had not kept listening to God. And I guess what I really came here to say today is we can talk about prayer all week long, but if we don't understand that the power of prayer is not the words that go up, the power of prayer are the words that come down. And if we stop listening, we may be disobedient as a church because we're doing what he said, not what he's saying. Oh, okay. Um, my friend, one of my very close friends, it was kind of funny, the, the, uh, a few weeks back, um, put on Facebook, he said he found an old can of Big Franks. Y'all know what Big Franks are? <laughs> he found an old can of Big Franks. Big Franks from 2013. It was down in his basement in one, in one, of, the, one of the closets there. And, and so he put it on Facebook and, and, and he texts me and he put it on Facebook so people could see. He said, do you think, this has a lot of sodium in it, right, to keep it. He said, do you think I can still eat these Big Franks? Because, you know, they keep Big Franks. Y'all know Big Franks can keep for a long time. Do you think I can still eat these Big Franks? And I texted him back. I said, man, are you crazy? I said, I mean, they, the can says 2013. You might have been able to get away in 2014 because of all the sodium, but it's 2019. And I told him this. I said, man, brother, uh, what was good for you then is not good for you now because it's expired. And could it be that the reason our churches are struggling in our ministry is because we're operating off expired instructions? So, 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 so we plan youth events based on models that worked in the 90s. And it's 2019, and then we wonder why young people don't show up. We have whole, because we're operating off expired instructions. Y'all gonna get real quiet right through here. Whole congregations that operate with irrelevant approaches to ministry because they stop seeking God about what he's doing now. The problem is, pervasive in our denomination because we have taken on an attitude of religious pride and theological arrogance. That's why we say stuff like, we have the truth. Now I know what you mean when you say that. But that's a problematic statement because that articulates a mindset that says we know it all, we have it all, and God can't teach us anymore. God cannot be fully known or understood by any finite mind. Yes, we've got some great truth. Yes, we've got some great doctrines, but we don't know the fullness of God. The Holy Ghost is still talking. The Holy Spirit is still moving. I wish I had a church. The Holy Ghost is still instructing. Our problem is our heads are down doing what God said when God might be giving us some new instructions. I'm not talking about changing God's word. I'm not talking about changing the message. 
but could it be that our methodologies are so outdated because we've fallen in love with the way things were? And in a real sense, we don't understand that revelation is progressive, not static. So we stop listening. And when we stop listening, we become more irrelevant. And then we become more defensive. Because as the world does not come in to hear our message, we say, well, they just don't want to know the truth. No, that's not the truth. The truth is we haven't been listening to what God is saying. Listen, we got to keep listening because if we don't keep listening, we'll miss what God is doing. We'll miss what God is doing new in the earth. His word doesn't change, but his methods do, do. That's why thousands of people are watching me right now. Because 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we did not have this technology. Somebody had to keep listening to say that this is not of the devil. We can use this for the glory of God. Because watch this. Sometimes what you call compromise is simply God speaking again. And that's why this church is still uncomfortable with the Holy Ghost. That's why we give lip service to understanding the Holy Spirit because we like control. We like the predictable. We don't like things to get out of control. But how many of you know you can't control the Holy Spirit? You can't control the move of God. I would submit to you that's why when God created the sanctuary service, it was first mobile. Mm, help me to preach this Holy Ghost. That, that it was a tabernacle. It was mobile. Uh, uh, and it was not God's idea to create a temple. That was man's idea to have a temple because he wanted us to have a sanctuary because he was trying to teach us that we need to be mobile. He did not call us to be an institution. He called us to be a movement. A movement means when the cloud moves we move when God moves we move but the problem is we tr we have become a church with a temple mentality trying to serve a sanctuary God he says he says Abraham Abraham what I told you is now expired don't hurt the boy because if you keep listening you'll hear the entire message I, I, I gotta close because I told you I'll be brief um, my, my, my wife told me one day uh, I was driving home she said baby I need you to stop by the ABC, I was, I was close to the ABC. She said, stop by the ABC. I want you to get some veggie meat. And so I said, okay, baby, I'll do it. So I went by there like a good, obedient husband and, and uh, pulled in and got the veggie meat. I, I'm, I'm driving home and I made a stop that I didn't tell her about. It wasn't scheduled. I went by one of my stores I like to go to in Atlanta. And when, and when I, on my way home a little bit, Further, I'm about five minutes from the house. She said, oh, baby, did you get my message? I was texting you. I called you. You didn't respond. I said, oh, no, baby. Uh, where I was, I went to a place where I lost the, the message, you know, the signal dropped. I didn't hear it. She said, baby, I was trying to tell you to get some mayonnaise as well. I said, well, no, I didn't get the message. She said, but did you come straight home? Uh, I said, no, baby, I, I didn't come straight home. I, I made a little stop. She said, where did you go? I said, I went to my place. She said, uh, uh, and I realized, I said, well, when I go by there, sometimes the message drops. Watch this. Here it is. She said, baby, I was trying to get the message to you, but because you went someplace we had not talked about, the message wasn't able to get to you because the signal dropped and you weren't able to hear the rest of my instructions. You see, because when you go outside of God's will, sometimes you go outside of the frequency 
frequency to hear the next assignment that he's giving you. But do you know there is mercy for every missed message? Because what she told me is she said, that's all right, baby. I'm driving by Publix right now, the grocery store. She said, even though you missed the message and did not get what we need, I'm going to go buy and get what we need because, because when you miss it, I'll pick up the slack. And isn't that just what God does? When you miss your assignment, when you go outside of his will and the frequency and the signal drops, God continues to give you what you need. Because the Bible says, he looks up and sees a ram caught in the thicket. Now, this is something that you must understand that the Bible says when God told him to go there, he said, go to the land of Moriah and I'll show you which mountain. Which meant he had to go to a region and then God had to show him a particular mountain. Because the ram would not be on any mountain. The ram would be on the mountain God showed him. And could it be that sometimes we're trying to do the right thing on the wrong mountain? Because we stopped listening to what God was saying. But I came by here to let you know that even when you miss your assignment, even when you don't pray like you should, even when you talk more than you should listen, God and his mercy and his grace always supplies a blessing in the bush. There's always a blessing in the bush for God provided a substitute lamb. And the Bible says that Abraham took the lamb and offered it. Now God didn't tell him to offer it. God did not instruct him to do it. Read the passage. God didn't say anything about offering the lamb. But here's the good news. Is that God didn't have to tell him to offer the lamb. Because when God has been so good to you, no one should have to tell you to give him praise. That lamb became a thank offering unto God. That you gave me back my son. I'll give you the glory. And do I have about 15, no 20, maybe at least 100 people who can say thanks be to God for the substitute. Praise God for the substitute. For there was another lamb who climbed another hill and he was our substitute. He stretched his arms wide. He hung his head and he died so that all of us can receive eternal life. I shouldn't have to tell you to praise him because he is your substitute. I shouldn't have to prod you to say hallelujah because if it had not been for him, there would be no chance of eternal life. But praise be to God. He is Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides another lamb. Keep listening. Keep listening. I want everybody, if you would, to stand to your feet with me. Today I came to a meeting and I ran into the Messiah, the one who loves me, the one who gave his life for me. He was that lamb. And I want to accept his precious sacrifice on my behalf. I realize I can't do this by myself and I need the blood of Jesus to cover all of my sins. Number one, number two, if you're here, and you're saying, well, I've given my life to Jesus, but I'm having a struggle giving what God requires of me. I need him to help me to keep listening because I've stopped praying about certain things because they took too long and and my faith is waning and I've, I barely made it to camp meeting, but today I need more grace to trust him more. If that's you, I wanna give my life to Jesus or I just need more grace to trust him more, to keep listening so that I can be in alignment with God's will right now. Quickly, I wanna pray for you if you would just move, if you would just move to the altar.